However, in this thread, uh, recently I'm not uh, posting all this kind of video. One is because I'm not very motivated. The second is I'm busy. Uh, third is that this might sound to be an excuse, but it's also true that there are so many complaints about the current geometry workflow. As you go into a very complex setup, uh, geometry node is very inferior compared to many other systems in terms of user experience. The one of the very big issue is that if you go to the geometry nodes, that you, for example, you add an object, you can realize geometry, no, geometry has to connect to geometry, which actually happens when you have the a node tree like geometry separate x, y, z, combine x, y, z, or other things. The node tree has to be very linear, while in other systems, you can actually have another node and putting data into the sockets so that they do not look completely linear. The current system is too bad that the developer needs to really change that. There are several proposals being proposed, and I don't think you will understand them, but I post the link in the description. So if you're interested in you have time, you may take a look, but uh, it's just whatever. So it uh, means that starting from 3.0, everything will be dramatically changed. If you are going to use 2.93 for next two years, oh, you don't need to worry about this. But if you are going to use 3.0, then my tutorial will just be outdated and pointless. Another very important thing is the 2.93 geometry node is still not very complete. Like you're missing very important node which only presents in 3.0, like a switch node or something like attribute vector rotate. So I would say only from 3.0, Geometry nodes is a little bit more compatible to my expectation. It's still very immature. You still lack a lot of function, but it is start to be better and better. Uh, but the, so, which means it's kind of pointless to make a tutorial in 2.93. It will be better if you start to learn everything in 2.0. But uh, now, because the future system will be changed too much, to make a tutorial in 3.0 or whatever becomes pointless because these tutorials may not be useful in the future. Things will be changed dramatically. So this is kind of idea, but I think I'm going to test, uh, I'm going to make uh, this tutorial because I think it's very interesting. So basically the starting point is when I see a recommendation from my YouTube is uh, some pe uh, one people I followed is doing a Houdini tutorial talking about the ferro fluid. I'm not sure if you have ever looked at the ferro fluid, but anyway, it's just the animation that you show at the most beginning. This is not a necessary tutorial. This is more like a practice, but I think it will definitely work. I have no doubt. So we're going to try in this live fashion. So in order not to repeat the entire process, I'm voicing the entire noting here. So previously we've made this cube. And the first thing we're going to do is turn this cube into a sphere. You may ask why did I not use uh, UV sphere because the topology on the pole is extremely ugly. I'm not going to do that. You should use either a cube or icosphere sphere or anything which is, looks kind of more uniform over the places, 360 degree angle. Otherwise it will be awful in other cases, okay? So here, what do we do? I, I think both of them should work, but I think I'm going to try quad first. So first, let's take a subdivision surface. It looks kind of spherical, but not really spherical. It will be better if you take a cast modifier and set the factor into one. So you can see a little bit minor bulging of all these kind of edges so that it becomes more spherical. Okay. And then turn our geometry modifiers to the button so that we're manipulating everything on the top of this spherical cube. Next thing we're going to do is that so basically the principle we're going to use is very simple so now we have quads everywhere so throughout this sphere right and i'm going to select out the central point and bulging this single point out so that to make that a ferro fluid shape so you, now you see why do i not use the uv sphere because it's just a too uniform and the two pole will mess up the entire geometry 
But how can we actually isolate this center point? So firstly, we need this center point. But if you look at the geometry that we are generating, so if we disable this optimal displays, we do not have the center point. In this case, we definitely need that. So let's make a mesh nearby. So now we have this center point. But how can we isolate that? And that's why I'm doing this in geometry nodes in our previous step, is that we're going to use kind of a tricky, interesting method. So here is the attribute of proximity. And here, what are we doing? So let's think about the geometry we're having. So if I subdivide that, I have this center point. If I not subdivide that, I do not have that center point. And these are two basically the same geometry at the same location. The only difference is the subdivision level, okay? So if I use the attribute proximity, which is basically measure one point to the other points, the distance, then since they are mostly overlapping, most of the distance that your output, so let's output the D, will be zero at this place, at this place, at this place, at this place. But at the center point, there will be value larger than zero. The reason is that originally in our target geometry, we do not have the center point, so it's not overlapping. So it, by measuring the distance, it has to reach this point, that point, that point, that point. So there must be a value more than zero. So there is a distance. So it might sound a bit confusing, but immediately we'll see some results. Another thing, just to know that since we're evaluating points, you obviously need to use points instead of edge and faces. Okay, so next thing is just to visualize. I've released a some group nodes to make a more graph easier, and the DS are for free, so you can download from link in the description, or you do not necessarily need them at this moment. It's just for visualization, so I'm just going to call visualizer. And this is vertex color, which is easy, but I'm going to use the deform visualizer, and you just type the D. You immediately see kind of deformation of our attributes to visualize the effect. And by increasing this value, you can see there are some points which actually steadily stay in the same place. And these points are originally the, all these kind of vertices that it presents. And with, uh, what has been deformed are all the kind of vertices, which is basically the polygon center. Okay, so we it means we succeed in isolating all this kind of polygon center so that uh, our attributes only affect these places. Okay, so this is uh, very important. It means we're successful. But the deformation is not the way we want. We want it extruding out based on its normal. So next step will be very easy to do. What we do is just take the attribute factor mass, uh, taking the multiply, to d times with normal. So we create another d, so now this is whatever. And uh, we no longer need this visualizer, we're going to make it more official. So let's use the point translate. So this is actually how the visualizer really works. And let's take the point translate. So now we have all this kind of, it works great. So we can see all these kind of points pointing out. In this case, let's just increase the amplitude. So let's take another vector multiply and scale that up. So we have the Ds. Let's take a float and increase. So now everything has been extruded out. And this is what we're getting. So we get a basically weird star shape. Okay, and you can definitely increase the subdivision if you're not satisfied with that. And it looks kind of beautiful. I think it will be better if you add a subdivision surface even after that, so that it makes everything looks kind of quite smooth. But these are all based on your needs and your idea. So, but this is obviously not a finishing what we're going to do because this is not yet done. The one amazing part of the ferrofluid is that, wait, it definitely looks kind of a cube instead of a sphere, isn't it? We will fix that later. The, re the reason ferrofluid sometimes works interesting is that uh, there's only some parts 
which is close to the magnetic will be extruded out. Not everything will just be extruded out everywhere. So we need to use, make a kind of a new selection, a new mask about how it has been extruded out. So to do that, we need to use a concept which is called a fall. -off. A fall -off is basically a mask. I've explained this so many times. It's a very critical in motion graphics. So originally in Cinema 4D it's called a fall -off. Uh, fall -off. But now it's called a field. It essentially does not really change your things. It's just whatever. A subcursor. So how to apply the fall? -off? A very good part is as I said, I've made a preset of all these kind of motion graphics stuff. So definitely I have four. And I think it's the area four, which is basically a spherical four. The name does not really matter. I think it will change. Uh, so it's originally by its controller 001. I'm going to switch the controller to our controller. So controller, this is just an empty. You can make it whatever shape, whatever. So once we have that, I'm going to, so I created a fourth which is called FD and we're going to mix this FD to the original D in this case let's just take the attributes and take the attributes and take the FD so it does not seem anything has been changed but if you look elsewhere so because it's based on the distance so you can see as it goes closer to the objects, then you get this, this stuff. And it's definitely extruding out the normal most. Uh, I think you can definitely subdivide it a little bit more so that the resolution gets higher and interesting. So this is really all about it. Uh, in other cases, you can definitely use, how should I say, the recast node so that even if your your controller, your empties, goes beyond the surfaces, you can still work. But I don't think it's, and I don't think it really matters. And you can, uh, again, you can control the amplitude. You can also control the points. Can we subdivide it one more time? Does it change? Mm. Yes, you can subdivide it one more time so that the kind of distance or whatever being more exaggerated. Just kind of trying to play around with all these kind of values. It's parametric, procedural, whatever, whatever you call. And shade smooth. If you just directly shade smooth, does it actually work? Things working? Probably not. So to shade the smooth or this not geometry, let me think. Attributes field and shade the smooth. Take the booleans value on. Yeah, things like you have to do that manually using this attribute field. But anyway, I think I would just stop here because I, it's pointless to continue. You can do more things with, for example, instead of using the controller, you can also create a mask using the attribute sample texture. And you can move the sample texture coordinates with the coordinate, the presets that I've made. All these kind of things are just the extra information. Depends on how you do that, how you want to do that kind of idea. And this is just an example. Like you can also do this in Ecosphere, I think. You can also do, do so let's so we can share the node tree, can we? So let's take the Ecosphere and use take a geometry mode nodes. And use the geometry nodes one. Ah uh, seems like we have to subdivide them more times. Yeah, Icos Appear also works despite this, this, and that issues. But I think it's, you can you can make it better by just tweaking the value. I'm not going too much further in this case. It's really kind of pointless in my opinion. 
I'm this is this is just an example, right? So anyway, I think it's okay. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.